Hello, hello, welcome to the video. Today we are going to be talking about the Lion of the Jurassic as it is popularly known. Allosaurus, the King of the Morrison Formation and Superstar Carnivore, second only to Tyrannosaurus Rex. The first discovery of Allosaurus material was in 1869 when geologist Ferdinand Hayden was gifted a broken tail vertebrae in Middle Park, Colorado during a trip there which the locals thought was a fossilised horse hoof for some reason. It would later be described in 1870 by Joseph Lade, who named it Pochilopleuron after an already known European dinosaur. This name obviously wouldn't end up staying and Lade would later change it in 1873 to Androdemus. Due to the original location never being specified, this fossil could have been from any rock from the surrounding landscape, meaning it could be anything, so it's only presumed to have been Allosaurus. More Allosaurus material would be dug up during the Bone Wars, with countless different names being assigned to different bones of the same animal, due to the super-inflated egos that belong to Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Trinker Cope. But, you know, just business. Egos aside, this led to lots of confusion on what was even a valid species, with some authors saying ones like Labrosaurus were valid whilst others argued otherwise. Luckily, in 1976, James Madison would clear things up and make Allosaurus fragilis the official name and type species due to the original name Antrodemus being based on material that was deemed too fragmentary. Just as a quick side note, when researching older publications on Allosaurus that predate Madison's work, they tend to list Allosaurus as Antrodemus, so keep that in mind when looking through publications from before 1976. Anyway, the name Allosaurus means different lizard and fragilis translates to fragile, so the full name means fragile different lizard. The fragile part originating from Othniel Charles Marsh, who thought the vertebrae lacked strength according to Planet Dinosaur, the next generation of giant killers. However, the vertebrae Marsh thought to be too fragile would later turn out to be common among dinosaurs. Originally, there were 19 different species of Allosaurus accepted as valid, but now, at most, only three are considered valid. The second one is older than A. fragilis, being named Allosaurus Jimmadseni, and has poorer binocular vision, isn't as suited for tackling large prey, and has different shaped fenestrae. Alongside other differences, such as A. fragilis having a deeper snout, A. Jimmadseni isn't as common, and A. Jimmadseni having larger crest. However, some have noted there's been no studies on individual variation of Allosaurus, and that some features of A. Jimmadseni are also present in A. fragilis, and therefore is synonymous with A. fragilis. Regardless, on an individual level, however, Jimadsene does have some pretty good individuals representing it in the form of MOR693 and SMA0005, or more simply known as Big Al and Big Al2, the two most complete Allosaurus Jimadsene specimens known to this day, and two of the most punished animals in history, considering the numerous pathologies both had. The Jib Madsene bit is in reference to James Madison. The third species, Allosaurus europaeus, meaning European different lizard, was found in 1999 in Portugal, but is a little more dubious than the other two firmly established species. One study found similarities between it and A. fragilis, so some have proposed it being Allosaurus fragilis, but a little less gun loving than the American ones. There's also another species known as Allosaurus tendergarensis, hailing from Tanzania, which was even listed as a valid species in the second edition of the Dinosauria, the standard reference work on dinosaurs. But in more recent years, it's been recognised as a very dubious species, known from fragmentary material, so some have proposed it being something else entirely, such as a megalosaurid of some kind. And there's been reports of fossils of Allosaurus from places such as Australia, Siberia, and Switzerland, though these would later turn out to be recognised as separate animals. And for a while, scientists didn't know one dinosaur was an Allosaurus fragilis, thanks to a broken jaw and poor plaster reconstruction. Due to arguing over which animals are actually Allosaurus, and also due to the original material Marsh used to describe Allosaurus being fragmentary itself, 
people have pushed for a neotype to be established. For those who don't understand some words used in paleontology, such as holotype and neotype, a holotype is the original specimen used to define something as its own species, while the neotype is the successor to it. So people calling for an Allosaurus neotype are calling for a specimen that is much more complete to be used to define Allosaurus as a species, instead of the original material. If you want to learn more about the dubious specimens assigned to Allosaurus, I recommend checking out the page for Allosaurus on the Polish website Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs. It's a great website for reading about dinosaurs. Basically think of Wikipedia, but dedicated to dinosaurs and more trustworthy. Two of my books even list it in their bibliography. Anyway, numerous specimens have been found when combining all valid and dubious species together, with the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry alone giving us about 40 to 50 specimens according to most of my sources. One common thing you might have heard about Allosaurus at least once in your life is that it used its head like a hatchet. The argument behind these being the following things weak bite force, flexible jaws, and a strong skull. According to Planet Dinosaur, the next generation of giant killers, one study found the bite force to be at most a miserable 482.9 psi. As a comparison, lions can have bite forces up to nearly double that, at 936 psi bilaterally. A 2015 study found that Allosaurus could also open its jaws up to 92 degrees, and the study mentioned previously in the Planet Dinosaur book estimated the skull as being able to withstand vertical blows in the teeth up to 55,500 newtons, or about 12,476.9 pounds of force. However, this does have problems. First off, more recent studies suggest bite forces upwards of 1700 psi, and some have even gone higher than 2100 psi, which is a lot better. Also, said 2015 study said that was the maximum angle, and that the optimal was much less at only 32.5 degrees. The teeth are also fairly small for an animal its size, meaning that they'd most likely break off with each strike meaning after a few strikes, Allosaurus would be left toothless. One theory that's been proposed instead is something similar, known as a strike and tear method of feeding, which modern falcons use. This method has also been found to be effective against convex surfaces, meaning it would work well against the bodies of sauropods and stegosaurs. I'll talk more about hunting later on. And I also talked about the hatchet theory in my Sauropagonax video, so I recommend checking that out as well. Speaking of which, some, as mentioned in my Sauropagonax video, believe it to be a species of Allosaurus, and should have the name changed accordingly from S Maximus to A Maximus. Heck, I remember even watching one video where they claimed there's no differences other than that Sauropagonax is bigger and slightly more robust, and therefore it should be considered a species of Allosaurus. One thing I think people don't seem to take into account with this observation is that at least two differences were found with the vertebrae and chevrons in Sauropagonax, and Sauropagonax is reportedly found in upper sediments, whilst most Allosaurus specimens are found in lower sediments. Though I should note that these differences in Sauropagonax are only present in a few specimens of isolated and fragmentary bone. However, some studies, according to Encyclopedia Dinosaurs, such as a 2004 study by Thomas Holtz, have found Sauropagonax to be distinct from Allosaurus, though a 2008 study found no morphometric differences in the femur between Allosaurus fragilis and Sauropagonax maximus. If you were to ask me where I stand on this issue, there is a part of me that hopes Sauropagonax is distinct, since I kinda hate seeing such cool names going to waste, and that leads me to say that I think for now, these two should be considered separate, due to how fragmented uh, Sauropagonax is. So for now, I don't think we should jump to conclusions, because Wikipedia says it's just a bigger Allosaurus or whatever. Now, I guess some of you might be wondering now, that since Sauropagonax is typically thought of as being a bigger Allosaurus, then just how big is Allosaurus? Well, when talking about length, the average seems to be about 8.5 meters, with some larger individuals approaching 9.7 meters. And James Madsen in 1976 even mentioned some fossils designated AMNH5767, 
possibly belonging to a 12 meter plus individual. Though there is some debate about AMNH5767 in terms of whether or not it is a different dinosaur known as E. Pentarius or is it Allosaurus. In terms of weight estimates, one number you might often hear and see is 2.5 metric tons or somewhere around there. Though this is only for one of the larger, more complete individuals that measures about 9.7 meters, which is designated AMNH680. John Foster, the author of the book Jurassic West, the dinosaurs of the Morrison Formation and their world, and all around Morrison Formation expert, placed Allosaurus at an average size of 1,000 kilograms for large specimens, and the medium ones at about 700 kilos based on measuring their femurs. A 3D model of Big Al placed him at being around 1,500 kilograms. This is interesting since Big Al wasn't even fully grown, being at least 87% mature according to what I've read. Sadly, he died young because of numerous pathologies in his bones and most likely hunger as well. One of these pathologies caused bone growth on one of his feet, which reduced mobility, meaning he wouldn't have been able to hunt anything. Allosaurus was also one of the first theropod dinosaurs to have its weight estimated. In 1962, it was estimated to have a weight of about 2,090 kilograms, in comparison to 6,890 kilograms for Tyrannosaurus in the same study. If you want to read through this study, I believe it's Colbert, 1962. One study also found that Allosaurus could reach an age of about 28 years old, giving them a similar lifespan to Tyrannosaurus. It was also found that they could reach maturation fairly quickly at about age 15 and putting on about 150 kilograms to 200 kilograms each year until they finished growing. Another study found a sort of soft tissue in the bone of an Allosaurus that acts as a store for calcium, which is only found today in female birds of breeding age to aid in eggshell production, with the interesting part being this individual was only 10 years old meaning she reached sexual maturity before she had finished growing. Alongside that, when it comes to the growth and maturity of Allosaurus, similarly to Tyrannosaurus, juveniles were actually built more for speed than adults, having proportionally longer arms and legs, meaning Allosaurus juveniles most likely had a different niche in the ecosystem, this with decreased competition between juveniles and adults. Unlike Saurophaganax, as mentioned earlier, there has been numerous specimens of Allosaurus found, ranging from small, fragmentary bones to pretty much complete skeletons. The Cleveland Lloyd Quarry has become famous as an Allosaurus fragilis hotspot, with numerous specimens being discovered there. However, even though this quarry has proven very helpful for understanding the animal more, it has also brought speculation upon it with the question of why are so many Allosauruses are found there. One theory being that they were victims of a predator trap in the form of thick mud near bodies of water. However, alternative theories have popped up, such as mass floods and droughts. Either way, whether they died from a drought, flood or predator trap, the specimens found have proven helpful to understand Allosaurus, with numerous advancements in our understanding of the animal being made. We now know that the animal had roughly 20 degrees of binocular vision, that it held its head at a horizontal level, it had a brain shaped like a crocodile's, large olfactory bulbs, but underdeveloped ability to process scents picked up by them, and could best hear low frequency sounds. Surprisingly to me, according to one of my sources, one common myth is that Allosaurus is the ancestor of Tyrannosaurus rex. For those who might believe this, these two are in fact not even closely related. Allosaurus belongs to the clade Carnosauria, whilst Tyrannosaurus is in the clade Solorosauria. The lineages both belong to split off fairly early from one another, so no, one of the most famous dinosaurs out there didn't evolve into the most famous dinosaur out there. In terms of environment, Allosaurus is mainly found in the North American Morrison Formation, which is one of the most famous formations out there in North America, with Darren Nash writing about it in his book Dinopedia, A Brief Compendium of Dinosaur Lore, and Morrison Formation expert John Foster wrote his own book about it in 2007 and published a second revised edition back in October of 2020. 
the only fossil formation I can think of possibly rivaling it in North America for the title of most famous North American fossil formation being that of the Hell Creek Formation. And just like how the Hell Creek Formation had its fair share of famous animals, the Morrison did so as well. There were numerous sauropods, such as Apatosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Barosaurus, Brontosaurus, Camarasaurus, Haplocanthosaurus, and Diplodocus, and other theropods also, such as Ceratosaurus, Torvosaurus, Ornitholestes, and Sauropaganax. I should point out, however, that Torvosaurus and Sauropaganax lived at different times in the Morrison Formation, with Sauropaganax coming after Torvosaurus, if I remember correctly. The Morrison ranges from 147 to 156 million years ago, so not every dinosaur from there lived together, considering the average time for a dinosaur species is between 1 and 3 million years, according to dinosaurs how they lived and evolved. In terms of armoured herbivores, the famous Stegosaurus called the Morrison home, and has fossil evidence supporting the idea it had a predator-prey relationship with Allosaurus, including what Trey the Explainer deemed the first recorded nut shot in history. An Allosaurus tail vertebrae was found with a wound resembling the size and shape of a Stegosaurus phagomizer, meaning this Allosaurus probably would have woken up the next day walking funny. Cuba just like your mother jokes. There was also the similar sized Hesperosaurus, the small Ankylosaur Gorgaliosaurus, kangaroo sized Dryosaurus, and cow sized Camptosaurus. When it comes to Camptosaurus and Dryosaurus, Allosaurus could probably just run them down or ambush them, using its speed to make a swift kill. Estimates for speed of Allosaurus range from 28 to 55 kilometers an hour, depending on what you read, by the way. With the more medium-sized prey items, ones like Stegosaurus would have put up a challenge, but wouldn't have been impossible to take down. The sauropods, on the other hand, have brought up numerous questions about the behaviour of Allosaurus as a predator. Due to how big some of them were, Allosaurus wouldn't have been able to hunt them. Some have proposed the idea of pack hunting, with Robert Backer taking a step further with the idea of parental care, but pack hunting, let alone parental care, remains controversial for Allosaurus. Some have pointed to the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry as evidence, though the number of Allosaurus's found there is believed to have been the result of a predator trap. One thing I think people forget is that Allosaurus lived with other larger predators also, so perhaps they fed on the sauropods instead, whilst Allosaurus fed on other, much easier prey than sauropods. Allosaurus had some characteristics more built for hunting small ornithopods such as large arms and light and mobile skull. Allosaurus also had 20 degrees of binocular vision, which is similar to modern crocodilians, meaning it probably was an ambush hunter of some smaller prey, such as Camptosaurus and Dryosaurus, but also wouldn't mind taking on larger animals such as Stegosaurus from time to time. Also, just going off script here, if I remember correctly, I remember reading something saying that Allosaurus skulls and other fossils have been found with bite marks, indicating fights with individuals of the same species, so they probably wouldn't cooperate in the first place to take down sauropods. Maybe in a loose gang, but not really organised pack hunting like wolves. Going back to the script now, you'd probably find that when hunting, it would act like a big cat where it would grab a hold with its arms and then bite down, most likely going for the neck. One study, according to theropods and other dinosaur forms, found that Allosaurus had the widest range of wrist mobility at 140 degrees of rotation, so it might have used that to hunt in this manner. Though, according to dinosaurs, how they lived and evolved, theropods pretty much had their hands fixed in a clapping position, though it'd still probably be able to grab a hold well even if they were fixed in one position. When it comes to dinosaur media, Allosaurus is pretty much like AKs for films involving assault rifles. Just like the famous Kalashnikov, it's a must-have. Early last century, Lost World adventure stories were all the rage, with places like South America and Africa making prime hotspots for these due to them not being as explored as they are now today. Dinosaurs living today fit right into the Lost World genre, and Allosaurus was one of the first dinosaurs to appear in such stories of adventurers going off in search of secret treasures or lost civilizations. One of the earliest appearances in media being the 1912 novel The Lost World by Sherlock Holmes author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The different lizard also appears in the 1925 silent film based on Doyle's novel and the 2001 Lost World TV movie. 
with the former being the first silent film I watched. Some other more famous appearances of Allosaurus being The Beast of Hollow Mountain in 1956 and The Valley of Guanji in 1969, alongside the ones most of you are probably most nostalgic for, The Walking with Dinosaurs series and their Ballad of Big Owl special, and Planet Dinosaur, where it gets its kill stolen by a Saurophaganax. There's also been lesser known appearances of the iconic animal in media, such as that of Dinosaur Revolution, with one simply known as Broken Jaw, for obvious reasons. And The Land of the Lost Movie, starring Will Ferrell, where it's shown having a territorial match with a Tyrannosaurus, before turning its focus towards the human characters. The film is based on a kids TV series from the 1970s, which also features an Allosaurus known as Big Alice, who gets into a fight with another predator, Grumpy the Tyrannosaurus, in one episode. The dinosaurs in the 2009 film are named after these two as a little reference to what the film is based on. Allosaurus also appears in the Scooby-Doo film Legend of the Phantosaur, has a brief cameo in one of the Ice Age films, and is featured in an episode of Dinosaur Train. The two most recent Jurassic World films and a short film titled The Battle at Big Rock also gives the animal some screen time on the big screen. The appearance I'm most familiar with, however, is that of Dinosaur King's portrayal of the animal as this super fast animal using its move card Mayfly to take down opponents quickly and easily. One thing of interest about Dinosaur King and its Allosaurus is that it probably belongs to the wrong class of animals in the show. For those who don't know, each dinosaur has a specific element attached to it in the show. The series is basically a ripoff of Pokemon, so no surprise there. Anyway, Allosaurus in the series is a wind element dinosaur, while pretty much every other dinosaur it's closely related to in the series is in the fire element, including Saurophaganax, which is probably its closest relative in the entirety of Season 1. Though in defense of this, I can see why our source is in the wind element instead of the fire element. You see, each element has a running theme with its dinosaurs besides animals from certain clades belonging to them. The fire element, for example, has many large carnivores, such as the Splitosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Saurophaganax, Carcodontosaurus, and Mapusaurus. These animals in the show act more like battleships, where they are meant to be bulky brawlers designed for taking just as much damage as they dish out. Allosaurus, with its comparatively slender build, even when compared to Displeasaurus, the smallest of the fire element dinosaurs of season 1 by the way, doesn't really fit this niche, so the creators probably decide to throw Allosaurus into the wind element since it's more suited for slender, fast moving animals, which to them looks like what Allosaurus would be. Though this doesn't really work when you consider they have some Abella swords in the fire element, which should be moved into the wind element. To me, it seems more so like with these two elements, they just decide to stop caring and being consistent. And one I think I should mention when talking about Allosaurus in popular culture is that of the Allosaurus has never seen such before meme. Possibly the greatest paleontology related meme in existence. It has spawned numerous clones, such as the one I used in my Mapusaurus video. Tarbosaurus has never seen such before. In the art world, Allosaurus has also gotten much attention, such as with one famous painting by Charles R. Knight, which was inspired by one of the most complete Allosaurus specimens known at the time which was ignored for years by Edward Drinker Cope, who barely knew he had it in his collection before it was put on display at the American Natural History Museum after his death. There's also numerous amazing pieces of artwork that show a more modern reconstruction of Allosaurus. Some of my favorites I'll show up on screen. The most recent appearance in media, to my knowledge, is Dinosaur with Stephen Fry, which currently sits at three and a half stars out of 10 on IMDb. I watched the first episode recently, and I'm not impressed and am not gonna bother continuing on. I think I'll just wait until I get my hands on a DVD of Walking with Dinosaurs or Planet Dinosaur if I'm going to watch any documentary featuring Allosaurus. And I think it would be terrible for me to at not least mention that Allosaurus is also the official state fossil of Utah, Though, from what I've heard, this has come under attack back in 2017, with some calling for Utah Raptor to be Utah Raptor's state fossil instead, thanks to a 10 year old boy. However, there was a compromise made in 2018 in the form of making Utah Raptor Utah's state dinosaur instead of state fossil. 
Anyway, I think it's safe to say Allosaurus is one of the most well understood and iconic dinosaurs of all time, with it being second only to Tyrannosaurus when it comes to carnivores of all ages, and is definitely unrivalled when talking exclusively Jurassic theropods, with one of the runner-ups for next most famous Jurassic theropod, possibly even just being a species of Allosaurus. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this video, and will like and subscribe as a result. Goodbye.